Hello, good morning, my lovely fourth grade. How are you today? Everything is good with you? Uh, okay, uh, recently you received your revision sheet, uh, and um, uh, during this and uh, next week, we are going to make uh, once again a revision and review about from uh, all lessons we which we had um, during the last uh, during the um, uh, third quarter. Uh, I am. I will do my best to make uh, as easy as possible this. Uh, and um, we are going to start with uh, lesson number one, chapter eight, early Roman Republic. And then we are going to continue with the Roman Empire, what is happening there to make revision uh, about uh, all uh, the most important things from these lessons, okay? Uh, so let's start uh, with early Roman Republic. So in that time, um, uh, like Greece, Italy is on peninsula, and the uh, Ita Italian peninsula is um, um, is shaped like a boot. Uh, also, like Greece, Italy has many mountains. Unlike Greece, uh, Italy, um, however, Italy has two large rivers: uh, the Po River. Uh, in the north and the Tiber uh, river uh, is in the center of Italy. Also has much more land than can be used for farming than Greece. Uh, and in ancient time uh, different people settled on and around the Italian peninsula. So um, So it was like um, um, the beginning of uh, antique uh, Rome, of um, uh, Rome uh, Republic. Uh, so how uh, how exactly uh, early Roman Republic uh, it's uh, it begun? Uh, so a group of people uh, called the Etruscans uh, settled in the northern Italy. Uh, around 800 years BC. Uh, no one knows exactly where they came from. Uh, they began to expand uh, their territory around 600 BC. The Etruscans conquered the Latins who live in the central part of Pelins Peninsula. So don't uh, forget that at uh, the beginning uh, there were Latin people. Uh, Later came Etruscans and they conquered them and um, uh, one Latin village was called Rome. The Etruscans um, uh, drained the Martians near Rome. Uh, this gave them more a la a land uh, where, where they can build a city. And under Etruscan rule, Rome grew into a city. So don't forget how its uh, Rome uh, Republic actually began. Uh, the Etruscan king were often cruel. In uh, 509 BC, the Romans rebelled. Uh, they sent uh, the Etruscan king out of Rome uh, and uh, set up a new kind of government. So uh, they call government republic, remember this, that they call new government republic. It was similar kind of republic like in Athens because uh, the people could vote there. But Athens had uh, direct democracy and uh, Rome uh, set up an indirect democracy. The people voted for leaders uh, and then leaders uh, voted on different uh, issues. The leaders were called representatives because they represented the people. Uh, different form of representative government are still used today in United States and other countries. So we still have this kind of um, democracy and this kind of governments. Uh, 
so uh, early early Roman government uh, had two leaders they were called consuls and the consuls had very big power like a king uh, but if they agree with each other so co two consuls must agree so don't forget uh, the Roman government have two, had uh, two leaders consuls and they must agree um, and in that case they have big power uh, in that time uh, consuls were advised by senate remember this senate is important and senate was made up to 13, uh, 300 men uh, in that time um, a senate uh, uh, could uh, choose a dictator and dictator is leader with absolute power but in that time in Roman government they choose dictator only in case of war so only in case of war and only for six months they can choose dictator and dictator to repeat you once again it's leader with absolute power okay this clear uh, in that time the Roman Republic had um, citizens, uh, patricians and plebeians. So you can see uh, left side is uh, uh, patricians and uh, uh, right side plebeians. Uh, plebeians had little power, only patricians uh, could be consuls. Um, and uh, later there was like a lot of problems because they were like lower class uh, they didn't have so much rights and um, uh, it was like um, um, very hard and very difficult in that time and even marriage uh, should not uh, take place between plebeians and patricians uh, so, um, these two um, kind of, of um, citizen in Roman doesn't have the same rights, the same roots and uh, of course for uh, plebeians uh, was very difficult in that time. Um, the law was clear, plebeians um, and the patricians are not equal. So that was the law in Rome Republic in that moment. Um, so then plebeians started to learn law uh, and they started to demand changes. The plebeians gained more rights. They were allowed to choose their own leaders, tribunes. So they start to like to have better life in that moment uh, from this part it's uh, just important to, to remember these two classes of citizen in Rome Republic okay and uh, you have this diagram just to see how it looks um, uh, uh, like uh, levels in a citizen who was the main uh, Senate, we can consul, we have a different um, uh, kind of uh, citizen uh, and at the end of this uh, schedule we have uh, slaves. Okay, this is just to uh, remind you how it uh, looks and uh, how it was life in um, Rome Republic. Um, the most important that father was uh, in charge for everything uh, he was working bring money supporting family and a uh, woman took care about home about children and they really have like um, uh, pretty much good and nice life uh, but that was hierarchy that uh, man was in charge um, for everything in poorer families, uh, the wife need have work in shop or a field uh, with her husband. So in rich families, women stay always at home. Boys and girls um, of the partition calls um, uh, and partition class went to school together. 
girls often married by the age of 13. Can you imagine this? And boys started in school longer and usually did not marry until age 20. Okay. Uh, the growth of the Roman Republic. So um, the Romans were skilled soldiers, very strong with good skills. Um, and um, their strong army took control of the entire Italia, Italian peninsula by about 270 uh, BC. Rome's next goal was to control uh, trade in the Mediterranean Sea. Remember uh, this uh, well. Um, because it was like a um, good strategic position, good geography position, good trade position, because they had good, um, good army, strong army, good strategy, they wanted to take control uh, under the whole Mediterranean Sea. And so, however, the people of Carthagin, um, uh, a city on the northern uh, coast of Africa, also wanted this control. Why? Because it was a good strategic uh, position. Um, and Carthagin went uh, uh, to war against Rome in 264 BC. Uh, this was the first of three wars known as Panic Wars. Okay, so remember, this was the first one, we had second one, and uh, then later uh, we have um, uh, third uh, Panic War. And all wars were because of control of Mediterranean Sea, actually because of control and North Africa. So after 23 years of fighting, Rome won the first war. Then in uh, 218, Hannibal led the army of Carthagin over the Alps. Hannibal was really powerful leader and his army was very strong. Can you imagine 23 years they had war? And then again, uh, his army included elephants that each carried around 15 soldiers. So can you imagine in that time how his army was powerful? The Romans were um, taken by surprise, they didn't expect this, how come, elephants, oh my god, um, and they didn't think uh, any army could get through the mountains. Then the Romans attacked Carthagin, forcing Hannibal to return home. Rome won Second Panic War in 202 BC. So can you imagine how it was strong Roman army in that time? They even fighted uh, Hannibal uh, army with elephants. And the third Panic War began in um, 149 BC. Roman soldiers attacked Carthagin. Uh, they surrounded the city and cut off uh, the food supply. So that was the next strategy of Roman uh, army and the Romans burned the city of Carthagin to the ground. So they destroyed one very strong city in that time. Uh, by the end of the Panic War, Rome controlled Greece, Northern Africa and other lands around the Aryan Sea. So this is like... Um, the diagram of uh, uh, Rome Empire and uh, how many lands they control it. Okay, this is now clear for you. You understand? And uh, please, uh, because these war are so important. Hannibal commanded what was Hannibal in was essence a mercenary army. Strong and powerful leader. Hannibal's and army the is the best in the world at that time. It's very experienced. It consists of professional soldiers. Fighting is what they do. He built his army around a corps of trusted crack troops. It was a veritable multinational melting pot of men drawn from Carthage's many subject territories. It's also a well-balanced army. It consists of lots of different nations, all speaking different languages. 
but each of them bring particular techniques of fighting that together are far more formidable than an army that everyone fights in exactly the same way. The genius of, of Hannibal is that he takes all these disparate elements and gets them to work in combination. And you know what it was very difficult because most of Utilizing their different skills, he united them into a formidable fighting so force, strong, far so deadlier so than merely the sum of their parts. Good organization, good strategy. The bulk Every. of Hannibal's army was made up of Spanish soldiers who formed the core of his infantry. Famed as warriors using a curved sword, the Falcata. In addition to his troops from Spain, he had various specialists. Slingers from the Balearic Islands. From today's perspective, using a sling as a weapon might seem a bit primitive, but they were formidable. They more than matched any contemporary archer. Legend has it that the Balearic slingers were paid in women rather than gold or silver. And then there were the Numidian cavalry from North Africa. They were incredibly maneuverable. They would charge the enemy, shower them with javelins, then flee, only to rally and repeat the attack. These blokes don't ride with a saddle, they don't ride with a bridle, they don't wear any armor, they're very fast, ride small, agile little ponies, and they're natural horsemen. They've been riding since they were small boys. On the battlefield, there was no cavalry that even came close to matching them. With his fast and flexible army, Hannibal was a formidable opponent by any standard. But he had another ace up his sleeve, a weapon designed to strike fear and terror. So these soldiers were treated to be soldiers and good army from childhood, since they know for themselves they were raised and treated like real soldiers. So to be soldiers, to be dedicated uh, to army in, in, is in their blood. There was no cavalry that even came close to matching them. With his fast and flexible army, Hannibal was a formidable opponent by any standard. But he had another ace up his sleeve, a weapon designed to strike fear and terror. That will be all from this lesson, my lovely students. I wish you a great day. Take care about yourself. Don't forget about your lessons. Um, and I hope that we are going to see uh, next week. Have a nice day. Bye.